Hello and welcome to TechSuts. Today we'll be talking about how the i7-860 stacks up in 2017. So, let's get started. <laughs> background on the i7-860, obviously it's an i7, <clears throat> i7 so it's got 4 cores, 8 threads, it was actually the first generation of i7s, so um, it was line field, just got my notes here, um, so yeah it launched the third quarter of 2009 um, with a base clock of 2.8 GHz and a max turbo of 3.46. Um, with 8 megabytes of smart cache. Now this this CPU was yeah coming off the back of the Core 2 Duos and the Core 2 Quads. So this was really the start of the i7 series which now we got like 8th generation i7s with 10 cores, 20 threads. But this was the first it it supported max 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR3 though. Um, PCIe 2.0, they supported, so not 3.0, but, you know, <coughs> using the LGA 1156 socket, and a T-Max temperature, which is very low these days, of 72.7. So with this CPU being, with this CPU having a TDP of 95 watts, and a max temperature of 72.9 degrees. This thing needs a lot of cooling because otherwise it can get very hot very quickly and start thermal throttling. So anyone that has one, not a whole lot of people, um, just be mindful of that. So while this had turbo boost technology um, and hyper threading, it did not have inbuilt graphics. So these CPUs will always need a dedicated graphics card and that should be the normal for i7s these days because for what they're used for so it doesn't really matter because everyone just runs a GPU of from very, very low end to very high end on these, well not this 860s but back in the day, yeah they ran some quite high cards then. So why not we run some benchmarks? and see how it stacks up between even i3s, i5s and i7s of today. So, I reckon this will be very interesting and show you how much Intel has progressed over from 1st gen to 7th to 8th gen CPUs. So firstly, let's get over to Geekbench. Okay, so I haven't run Geekbench before on this, on this computer, so Let's have it here, as you can see, i7-860, one processor, four cores, eight thread, line field, base 2.77, max 3.42. So let's run CPU benchmark and see how this goes. So now the test is done, you can see we got a single core score of 2628 and a multi core score of 8398. So let's compare it against others. Okay, so I'm going to look at Geekbench numbers. You can see here even, even the i3 i7100 beats out the i7-860 in single core and multi-core performance and thinking about how cheap a 7100 is you can see how much bang for your buck you're getting these days and then the i5 and i7 both go on way past that with multi-core with multi-core on the new i7-7700, so not even the 7700K, just about doubling the performance of the multi-core on the i7-860. 
So you can really see how much this i7-860 is lagging behind to these days. However, you can pick these these i7-860s and motherboards up for like 100 Australian dollars. So if you're so if you're not trying to do heaps of video editing and high intensive things on this, which that's exactly what I use it for, but I now have a, another computer for doing a lot of those intensive things. If you're browsing the web, going through your emails, watching YouTube videos, the R7860 wouldn't be the worst thing. However, you've got to be careful now that because it's so old, drivers are going to become an issue and it doesn't have a lot of the modern things, well, a lot of things the modern CPUs have. Um, so you could also go the other route and buy an, even an i3 and they'll be quicker in both single core and multi core. And plus, you get all the added things of better turbo boost in low thermals, higher T max integrated graphics, all that to make it better. So, now there's a question, is it worth using an i7-860 at all today for any purposes? Well, there's a small one. <laughs> if you're real on a very tight budget, then the 860 can be a good thing for you for a while. However, if if you go and spend that 50 bucks, 100 bucks more, you could even get an i7 2650 or whatever the second generation i7s were that's overclockable, that's even better on, um, even a fair bit better than this. So, in simple words, no, I wouldn't really recommend using this because of how old it is. It's over 8 years old now. So really, it's a very old CPU. So I I wouldn't buy one. <laughs> I'd highly rec um, highly encourage you buy something else from this. There is there is a fair bit of other options that do cost more, um, but you definitely begin a much much better CPU than this because even just the thermals of this are a huge playing part. It, you mean you need a more beefy cooler and you, you can't get up to high temperatures. A lot of more mon CPUs you can hit a hundred and they'll be fine before they start thermal throttling. This you hit the the at seventy three and it starts thermal throttling and you haven't got a whole lot of power already, so it's gonna be very hard to get the most performance out of this. So so really, in conclusion, in using this in 2017, the best it's for is web browsing, doing your emails, bit of Word, whatnot, and it's not much good for anything else. You you open up Adobe Premiere and it struggles, it stutters everywhere, even in 1080p product um, projects. I haven't tried After Effects; that wouldn't be any good. So yeah, unless you're just pissed hardly using your computer for much, just web browsing YouTube videos. This would, this would be fairly fine, but if you're using anything more, I'd highly recommend you even spend that bit more money and go with the i3 or or even an i7-7600. So anyway, guys, that's, that's how the i7-860 stacks up in 2017. So, if you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't so much like it, the other button does work, unfortunately. Um, if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel, always helps. So guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.